Right, this is something I've already shared a video with you on, but I thought it'd be best to go back and do it again. Some people understood what was going on in the first video, but maybe if I make it a little bit clearer and have a look at using a different analogy, we might be able to increase our understanding. Right, we did concentrations, and for the rest of the time in your science career, or in your high school career, you're going to be using concentrations as part of what's going on. So, let's look at the basics. Here I've said to you, concentration is about how much chemical is dissolved in a volume of liquid. We are normally talking about water. So we might be talking about aqueous. Now aqueous ones are simply anything where water is the thing that does the dissolving. Now we learned that's proper name is a solvent. So if water is a solvent. Now the common types of concentration to tell us how much of something is there basically depends upon what we're trying to do. Some people use parts per million. In other words, for every million parts of something, how many are the particular substance? Now, this can be done for air pollution. It can be done for other things as well. All right? Sometimes on documents that are put out by governments, they will talk about parts per million as levels that are acceptable. Now, when we did it with our biological one and our salt solution, we talked about percentage. Another one which you're going to learn more about maybe in year 11 is a thing called molarity. Now, this comes back from a thing, and I don't know why. I've never actually found out why they actually called it this. But one of the things we actually have in chemistry is a thing called a mole. Now, a mole normally is a little animal. It may live in its underground, it's worms. But this one talks about how much, and it's a comparison tool. So molarity is also a comparison tool. Now, for the sake of this, this video, I'm going to use that one. I'm going to use molarity. All right. So when we're working these things out, we are normally going to be asked to be given something by a teacher. And this will be a solution of very, very known or exact concentration. And as we know, that's called a stock solution. And what you're going to be asked to do is to change it. You're going to be asked to change it normally by adding water to it. Now, we never add chemicals. It's only about taking water out by evaporating or adding water into it. So normally if we add water in, we would expect the concentration of the chemical to be less. If we remove water, we would expect the concentration of chemical to be more because we take in the water, not the chemical. Okay, so these are the things we're going to do. Now I hope that makes a bit of sense. So let's work with this. Now in the previous video, I, I called this one, whenever we decrease the amount of concentration or the concentration of something, by adding water, we are diluting. And that's what we're basically going to look at here today. As I said, we've got a stock solution and a stock solution has an exact concentration. Not about, it is exactly what it says on the bottle. I hope you remember all that. All right, so let's look at this. I'm going to use boxes, and I've tried to make them identical in size. Okay, so let's look at an example. I'm going to imagine this red box here is 50 cm cubes or 50 mils of 2m chemical. In other words, here is the concentration, 2m. That's molarity, all right, of chemical. Yeah, okay with that, so I've got this one. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to add some water to it. And I'm going to add the same amount. I'm going to add the same volume. Okay, so let's look at the, what can we can come up with here. 
So we can see that our total volume is going to be 100 cm cubed. 50 came from the, from the chemical, 50 came from the water. So if we think about that, and I'm done, drawn it this way, so half of the volume came from the chemical. The other half has no chemical in it, only water. So that means my new concentration, I'm only going to put the CONC, is going to be 2M times a half, or 1M. So I've got a solution that's made 1M. I've halved it by adding the same volume of water. I hope that's okay. So let's move on. Now let's take that liquid. We've taken that liquid. <coughs> Here it is. This is the liquid we had. That's our thing there. And we said that was 1M. Now, now I've got 1M solution <coughs> and I've added it to my new volume. Is not 100 anymore, it's 200. Yeah? Of which only chemical is 50 cm cubed or one quarter of the total. So my new concentration is going to be. 2 molar times a quarter, which is 0.5 m. If we did it the other way, we know this square here, or this rectangle here, is 1 m. And I've added equal amounts of water, so I'm going to... This now corresponds to half of that, right? So it would be half of 1, or 0.5 molar. I'm using the red one to help me out here. All right, so let's go even further. So I've added more water still. So we'd expect our number of M's to get smaller. So here it is, I'm gonna use a different color this time. How about I use yellow? I'm gonna go around it. This is the one, now this one here, sorry about my terrible drawing. This one here in the yellow box is 0.5M. All right. So how much have I got? 200. I've got one, two, three, four boxes. Each box is 50, so I've got 200. I'm going to add another 200 to it. I think you can see where this is going. So we've got 200 of 0.5M plus 200 of water. So we can see water is half the amount of that, so we would be expecting our new concentration to be 0.5 times a half, or 0.25 M. Let's recheck it using our original chemical things. Right, our original chemical is 50 times 2M. Yep. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 total. So our new, and that's so us 50 in 8 by 50s is 400 um, cm cubes. All right. So 50 cm cubes in 200 is going to be, isn't that 1 eighth? So it's going to be 2m times 1 on 8. So 1 eighth of that is 0.25 molar. So either way we do it, we still get the same answer. If you'd like to, this is one of the easiest ways to imagine how it goes through. You simply go through 
and work it out from there. I hope that makes some sense. And I hope you now have a bit better understanding about how we can work out molarities or percentages. The same would apply to percentages. If that was 2%, we change the percent instead of the M. That's all. That's all. Do the same exact thing.